feel like I'm in jail. I feel like I'm in an insane asylum. The groundbreaking experiment returns for the first time ever with seven former inmates. Three and a half years. Eight years. 26 years. Six different prisons. If we can't do this, no one can. I want to help better the conditions. The purpose is to help people suffer less. I feel like I'm buried alive. It's going to be the hardest 60 days of my life. Ah! 60 Days In, new season, Thursday, August 18th, only on A&E. Sheriff Skandra, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining me this morning. Talk about 60 Days In on A&E. Thank you so much. Is the goal of this series to improve jail conditions? Is that the ultimate goal? Absolutely. So that we can take a dive to look at what we call exploratory surgery. Um, you don't know what you have until you go in. Uh, and it's important, particularly now in the 21st century in law enforcement, that we're transparent uh, and that we raise levels of consciousness inside and outside of the jail uh, area to make sure that everyone understands what is needed, what the expectations are, and how do we fix that in real time. And that's one of the main reasons that we partner with a and &E in 60 Days In to achieve this goal. And how do you make changes to the jail culture that essentially have remained the same for decades? I mean, change comes slowly, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And it's challenging. And quite frankly, it hurts, uh, particularly to the people that have been inside of a system that was familiar with a, a particular way. But that's one of the things we're going to have to do with leadership in the 21st century law enforcement to make sure we change those type of cultures so that we are at a level that is respectable and responsible uh, and that we develop relationships along the way. No relationship, no trust. And what are some of the improvements or changes that you personally have initiated or you've noticed that needs improvement? Do you have any examples? Uh, several. We're actually too many to name. From a security standpoint, I can give you generalized type stuff. From a security standpoint, uh, to the things that we do professionally in terms of what the job entails, to make sure that the people that are on the job understand their job and the expectations, uh, to understand what we sworn oath to, which is to treat everyone in our custody humanely. Um, to, so to unpack those type of things are the changes that we have made holistically in real time. And this time around, we have ex-inmates who are going undercover, essentially. Is safety a top priority even for those ex-inmates? Safety is always a top priority for all of our people, and all of our men and women that are here, whether they're in custody or not in custody. But particularly with our seven participants, uh, safety was paramount. Uh, they understood that. We went over that with them consistently in terms of what we wanted them to be aware of. Uh, but a number of those things they were quite familiar with because of their experience that they had, uh, unfortunately, being inside of a jail prior to this, this time frame. I was saying being ex-inmates, they easily knew the culture and ways in jail to get undetected and get you the information you needed, correct? That's correct. Um, uh, they were able to get us the information that we needed, uh, some of which, quite frankly, since the jail is a city within a city, some of these things you would not know, particularly when you're inheriting a culture uh, of ways that they are accustomed to doing things specifically their way. And when we're changing that, it was important that we put additional eyes so that we can keep one eye on them and the other eye looking at them. And Henry County Jail houses over 800 inmates. Is overcrowding always an issue? No, but it's becoming an issue. Uh, one of the things we're focusing in on is to make sure that we lock up the people that should be locked up in the time frame of whatever crime that they committed. Uh, and the time frame and the growth in this county uh, has grown exponentially uh, over the last eight to 10 years. And so we, we are busting at the seams here. And so one of the things we have to look at moving forward is that how do we deal with the growth that we're dealing with because crime is elevated, not only in the metro area, but particularly here in Henry County. And with this show, uh, I love the transparency of it all, you know, but red tape, we're dealing with the government, correct? Is it difficult to get permission to have this show produced at all? Or what did you have to jump through the hoops to do the show? Well, not necessarily jumping through hoops, hoops, but it's just, uh, it's just internal and external bureaucracy in terms of what people are accustomed to. And uh, please don't do that. That's not one of the things that we do. I understand that. But I also understand that everything must change. Nothing stays the same, you know, and I preach that. And I think that this is what the community is looking for us to do to change this culture or the way that we're being viewed in law enforcement so that we, are, we can sit down at the same table and have an, have an unadulterated conversation about where we are and where we should go to bring us together. 
Well, Sheriff Scandrett, I appreciate your service. Thank you for your transparency and I applaud you and thank you for joining me today. Let's talk again soon. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.